Hello and welcome back to GoldStockTrades.com. Today we have back here with us Jim McKenzie. Jim is CEO of Ucor Rare Metals. Ucor can be traded as UCU on the TSX Venture, and it also can be traded as UURAF on the OTC. Thanks, Jim, for being back here with us. Thanks, Jim. It's been a long time, or at least it feels like it has, and a uh, great pleasure to talk to you as always. Jim, even though the resource market is struggling, Ucor has managed to accomplish some significant milestones. Can you review your accomplishments so far in 2013? Yeah, I'd I, I very much like to, Jeb. Um, you know, it's, it, it's true that the markets have been beleaguered, um, obviously, over the, the resource markets at least, um, over the last year and, and, and beyond. And uh, a lot of people will ask, you know, what have you been able to accomplish uh, during that period when, you know, effectively you have one arm and one leg tied behind your back? Um, and, and the truth is that we've accomplished a great deal, and so it might be a good idea just to review some of the things we've done really in the last um, eight to ten months and uh, sort of put a spotlight on uh, um, just how productive we've been in an, an otherwise uh, um, very challenging market. The first thing, obviously, is, and we've talked about this at length before, is the delivery of the PEA, or the Preliminary Economic Assessment, earlier this year. And that was a landmark document for us. It's, uh, as we've said many times, there's, you know, there's three major deliverables that um, a resource company goes through uh, or needs to transcend in order to get to, to construction. And the first being delivery of a resource, the second being delivery of a PEA, and the third and final being the delivery of a feasibility study, uh, which we're going to talk about hopefully later in, in the interview. But uh, the PEA is the second step of the second landmark event, and we I think we delivered that in spades. Um, we had uh, you know a tremendous NPV, uh, tremendous IRR amongst the, the, the highest in the business. Um, you know a lot of people ask me, um, you know, rare earth prices have obviously come off a little bit, at least the you know the heavies uh, and, and the lights obviously very very substantially over the last uh, year or so. And they ask how has that impacted on your PEA. And uh, the bottom line is that our PEA is still in the money, as they say. Um, there's still a significant uh, NPV associated with it, even with today's rare earth prices. And we actually see heavies starting to tick back um, uh, and upward. Um, so, uh, uh, you know, we're very uh, um, uh, confident and optimistic that uh, they'll continue in that direction. But Perhaps the, the biggest thing uh, that we can talk about relative to our PEA is our, our CapEx. And it's ironic, I should say, the biggest thing because it's one of the smallest things. It's, it's, uh, we have a CapEx that is amongst the lowest um, for prospective rare earth mines anywhere in the world. Um, the CapEx to, to have the mine up and going according to our estimations are, it's a little bit north of $200 million, about $221 million. And that's just, you know, that's a fraction of what other Many other competitors in the space are looking at, uh, several of which are looking at a billion dollars plus, and, and uh, more than a few are looking at two billion dollars plus to get into business. And so anyone will tell you that, you know, uh, one of the major obstacles to, to starting any business is the, the barrier to entry of how much money you have to spend for your bricks and mortar and for your infrastructure. And the bottom line is with Bocan, not a heck of a lot. It's, it's, it's a very small outlay. Um, you know, so that, that's, that's a huge thing. And, and uh, you know, other aspects of the PEA had to do with, uh, that were very compelling, had to do with the short timeline uh, to production. Um, we're still looking at, you know, uh, about three years to put this into production. That's a figure that we've carried forward for the last year or so, admittedly. Um, um, but uh, where we stand right now is that our objective is to be in production by 2017. And um, that's fairly close to uh, the objective that we've always had of, um, I believe our prior objective was in, in the latter part of 2016. Um, now we're looking at 2017, and, uh, and so we're, we're very, very close to maintaining uh, our objectives overall for the PEA. Um, another a huge uh, development for us, or at least something that we were very encouraged to have happen, was um, the Alaska State Legislature 
which convenes um, in Q1 of every year. Um, there was a resolution, resolution number eight, that was uh, right off the flagpole with the Alaska State Legislature, and that resolution basically said um, that um, both sides of the legislature, the House and the Senate, uh, voted unanimously in favor of moving the Bull Camp project ahead, and that's a huge thing. It's, you know, like uh, Alaska is. Um, uh, amongst the the wealthiest jurisdictions in the we the Western world on a per capita basis, a lot of people are surprised to hear that. But you know, there's 700,000 people that live in Alaska. Um, you know, less than the population of Nova Scotia, for instance, uh, and uh, they have a 44 billion dollar um, uh, permanent fund in Alaska, and it's just a, a tremendous. Uh, um, um, uh, outcome of years and years of, of steady investment in, in resources and uh, sustainable development. And uh, so the fact that Alaska legislature is behind us uh, means that a, a, a jurisdiction that has financial wherewithal um, is determined uh, to, to work with us to get this uh, whole mine into production. So you have a double whammy there, really, in terms of a low capex and a very wealthy a big brother, if you will, that is um, working with us um, um, financially and, and otherwise um, uh, to advance the project, and uh, uh, it's obviously a very good thing. Another big uh, announcement that we've made this year uh, was uh, XRT sorting or, or DEXERT, digital X-ray uh, technology. Um, I'm happy to say that that is an innovation that UCOR brought into the rare earth space it was the brainchild of our COO, Ken Collison. Uh, he had seen it in a, uh, a tungsten mine, the Mittersoil mine in Austria, and he saw that it was very effective for separating the wheat from the chaff in a, uh, a tungsten environment. He postulated that we could use it for rare earths and particularly for the bulk end deposit, and uh, through testing, um, we found that that was absolutely the case. Um, uh, we actually upgraded our sample size this year from bench scale testing of XRT or DEXERT uh, to a 20 ton sample and uh, uh, the results were even better at bulk scale and uh, which is, is, is uh, obviously a very good thing. Uh, at the end of the day we had uh, you know 52 percent uh, waste rejection so over half of the product um, that went into that circuit was being rejected in a good way because we're getting rid of uh, waste product and gang material and ending up with a much more uh, concentrated, high-grade product at the end of the day with XRT sorting. So that was a good announcement, the upgrade to the XRT at bulk level. Um, a couple of other things, uh, you know, we made an announcement this year um, in the summer that uh, we've commissioned our plan of ops. Um, the plan of ops um, is a, um, a blueprinting exercise for the mine. Um, we've got two of the de facto um, front runner names in the, in the business that are working on that, at Knight Pease Old uh, out of uh, Vancouver and Tech Tech um, out of the U.S. And actually, has, they have a branch office in Vancouver that's working with us on this. And the, the plan of ops is really, uh, it's the, the layout of the mine. It, it talks about um, uh, the situation of your, your uh, crushing and grinding and mill circuit. Um, it, uh, it speaks to uh, where your camp facilities are going to be. It speaks to where um, your um, beneficiation happens uh, for the ore. It looks at uh, where the shipping facilities are going to be to take the product uh, um, off of the line and, and when it's being processed and, and uh, uh, as a concentrate or as oxides, uh, ship it to, uh, to consumers uh, around the globe. So that's an important thing as well. And uh, finally, we made an announcement uh, very recently um, that uh, we had completed a, a permitting exercise um, with the U.S. Forest Service. That was actually announced in the, uh, September, I believe. And uh, what that essentially says is that uh, the U.S. Forest Service, which has jurisdiction over the area that we're operating in, um, has said that we can place an interim camp uh, at Bokan. Um, and that seems like an innocuous uh, sort of uh, observation, but the, the bottom line is we've been operating off of a, um, a seagoing barge 
since we've been out of Bocan, and with good reason, you need to do testing and so forth before you can actually build a, a semi-permanent or a permanent land camp. And uh, the bottom line is that the, the U.S. Forest Service has looked at our application for a camp facility at Bocan, and, they, and they've, they've given us the nod. They've seen no um, incursions or, or potential uh, problems with us building uh, a semi-permanent camp, which is obviously the prelude to a permanent camp. Uh, so that's a huge thing, and uh, another huge thing that uh, we've accomplished, and uh, we're very proud of that. Um, U.S. Forest Service, in that same announcement, uh, uh, we revealed that they've, they've also approved for infill drilling, and uh, uh, in order to uh, you know, finalize our, our field work for, in preparation for construction of the mine, uh, condemnation drilling, which is effectively drilling in the area that you think you're going to put your camp to make sure you have no valuable ore directly under your footprint of your camp and your mill facilities. And, and other field activities have been approved by the U.S. Forest Service as well. And uh, I, I said that the, the, the permitting uh, announcement was, was uh, the most recent announcement, but I'm, I'm overlooking something, obviously, that that's, uh, eclipses all uh, of those prior announcements, uh, is our, our resource upgrade. Um, our resource upgrade, that was a very, very recent announcement. Um, again, it was an announcement that, you know, it, it, you put these things out and... Uh, um, you know, you see how uh, the markets react, um, but, you know, that's something that sort of uh, was uh, lifted to the wind and, 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 and blew away sort of thing as much as, uh, you know, there wasn't a lot of traction out of it. Um, but I can tell you that that announcement was a very significant announcement. Uh, that what it meant was that um, we took our inf otherwise inferred resource that we announced a couple of years ago and we've... Um, transposed that in by and large into the indicated category so it's mostly indicated as we speak uh, there's only three categories that you can you know transcend as inferred indicated um, and uh, and measured being the ultimate and then you get into reserve calculations and so forth but uh, the bottom line is we've advanced our resource uh, tremendously um, that upgrade to our resource was the uh, uh, the outcome of some uh, $12 million in expenditures in the field over the last uh, couple of years. And um, so it, it wasn't a small undertaking. It was just really a, a very important uh, um, uh, event for us on our road to starting construction and, and getting our feasibility study uh, completed. And I should, one last thing I actually should mention, actually we're, our cup runneth over here in terms of things that we've accomplished lately. There's one other thing we, we just mentioned yesterday, or put out this week rather, um, is uh, the addition of another board member. Um, uh, Jeff Clark has just been appointed to our board. Uh, Jeff is, um, I think, a, a superstar in the making. He's a former partner of Faskins Martineau. Um, if you look at his, his academic CV, he's a uh, adjunct professor at uh, um, uh, universities in Ontario. He's a uh, uh, master's in law, master's in business, and, and uh, a good many other things. Um, he is the uh, former president of Byron Capital Markets, uh, which is a, uh, a boutique uh, a buy side um, bank uh, that specializes in the rare earths and, and electric metals, especially metals. So he comes from a background that is very much suited um, uh, to us and we're very pleased to have added him to the board. So, so that, in a nutshell, is, is some of the things we've had going on this year. And suffice to say, in the, the 10 or so months that have, have we put under our belt this year, we've accomplished a great deal.